Hey guys, welcome to another video. As always, I'm a little bit late to the party. Today we're going to check out how to mod Socket 771 Xeon processors to make them work in a Socket 775 motherboard. I've always been aware of this mod and there are heaps of guides out there already. I got interested into Socket 775 because the prices for boards and chips are really cheap at the moment. So it's cheap enough to just have fun. Socket 775 might not be the latest and greatest platform anymore, but for older games and uh, using it as a basic uh, Windows system or Linux, whatever, um, it will do the job just fine. Now, I'm especially interested in the higher end processors. For example, um, a Extreme Edition Core 2 Quad can still cost between $100 and $200, so they're still quite expensive but you can get an equivalent Xeon version for a quarter um, of the original price, basically. So to prepare for this video, I bought quite a few Xeon processors of AliExpress, and this one might be a very interesting model. It's clocked at three gigahertz. It's got 12 megabyte uh, cache and an FSB of 1,333, but it's low power. It's ha it has a TDP of only 80 watts. So this processor might be a really good overclocker. Now this chip is not uh, modded, so we will modding this one. Now if modding is not your thing, I have some really good news. Out of all the chips I bought, all of them are pretty much pre-modded already. So if you're not into filing or cutting, um, you can still get um, uh, on board with all these Xeon stuff. So you can see uh, we've got uh, some notches here on the bottom, but also here uh, on the sides. And if we flip it around, we can see this one has a sticker. The other processor, same thing. It had some modification uh, on the outer sides of the casing. And if we flip it over, this one has a slightly different type of mod. And prices are fairly identical. So it might just be a few dollars more to get a modded processor rather than one that you need to mod yourself. Um, and the easy to spot, uh, often the photo, the photo has um, the modification shown like this. There might also be a text on the photo saying something, no need adapter or something like that. And some people have, um, some sellers on eBay or AliExpress have a photo where you can see the uh, modification around this area. And we will, we will do both just in case you are eager to do the mod yourself. It's not that difficult. But from my point of view, I'd rather spend a few dollars more and get a chip that's already been modified. The other good news is if you're not into BIOS modding, uh, we need to inject some microcode so that these Xeon processors will get properly detected. If you're not into that, there are eBay sellers that offer a service. You basically contact them, tell them what motherboard you have, and they will sell you for a dollar a modified bias that you just have to flash and then you're good to go. So let's have a look how this mod works. Here we've got an LGA775 motherboard. This is not the board we're gonna uh, later use. This is a generic Intel motherboard, uh, basically just for testing if I stuff anything up, I'm not too fast. So here we have got the LGA775 socket and there's a little triangle here, which is quite important. That is used for orientation. So let's just open the socket and I'm gonna start with, uh, I think this is an uh, Celeron. So we can see there's a little triangle here. So that triangle lines up with the triangle on the socket. You just place your processor in here and you're good to go. You can shut it and mount the cooler. Now if we take a Xeon for socket 771, we can see we've got the triangle here. But if we try to put it in a socket, well, look at that, it doesn't fit. And the reason is on the Xeon, um, the so LGA socket is actually rotated. But don't get confused, just look at the triangle. So the triangle on the CPU has to match the triangle on the socket. So now we have a problem here. Um, we've got a piece of plastic in the way on this side and also on the other side. So we have two options. Option one, we can cut the plastic of the socket, so modifying the motherboard. And option two is we file away a little notch 
uh, on the processor itself up here and down there to make it fit. So you have two options. I don't want to modify the motherboard, so I'm going to go for option number two. We're going to modify the processor. So to make the job a bit easier, we're going to mark the exact position where we need to file. So here we've got the Celeron and that's the Xeon. I'll just uh, put it on top. So I have to file around here. So I'm just going to lay it flat like this. And that will give me an idea of where we need to file. And I'm just going to mark that spot. We're going to do the same thing with the other side, which is over here. Line it up with the processor. I'm just going to mark it. And we're good to go. Looking on the other side, we can see that there are some missing pins here. That just means we've got a little bit uh, extra room for the filing. And now there's no turning back. Now, I do recommend that you grab a few Celeron processors and you yeah, basically practice a little bit. I tried on two uh, CPUs. It got a little bit better, but I'm still not 100% comfortable. So hopefully this turns out all right. So like I said earlier, um, I'm not too much into modding stuff. So I prefer usually to pay a little bit extra and have someone do it for me. And with the current prices, uh, it makes a lot of sense. But um, we got to give this a fair shot. Um, so I'm using a guide here. And off we go. So I do recommend that you don't try to do the whole thing in one hit. So that, that's a good start. And always look at the other side, how far you have to go. So let's keep going. Yeah, and basically we're just gonna uh, continue and then I've got the motherboard um, sitting next to me and I will uh, start on the other side and then I will go back and forth seeing if it fits and then just make some small adjustments. Okay, I think we are done. So let's have a look. That fits in nicely. Uh, I butchered that side a little bit. I wasn't quite uh, on target, but that's okay. It fits nicely. That is almost ready to go. Oops, what am I doing? That is almost ready to go. We just now need to apply that sticker. And with sticker, I mean one of these. These are dirt cheap, a few dollars. You can get a bag from eBay, AliExpress and other places. So the one on the left is already uh, modded. So that one arrived with the sticker so you can get a good idea of uh, where we need to install it. And this is the chip that we need to apply the sticker to. So it's right about this area. I also recommend cleaning the area. I'm just going to use some uh, wet wipes, but of course you can use some uh, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol to clean the area. The reason for cleaning is just so to be sure that the sticker uh, actually sticks properly because we filed earlier there might might be some dust um, on the back side of the processor and yep so that's ready to go So that was a bit fiddly. So I do recommend you buy a bunch of stickers, five or 10, so you have a few spare ones uh, for practicing. But I think I've got it in the right spot. So now I'm gonna go into the computer lab, fire up the capture computer, uh, put in the chip, and hopefully it will post. And then we have a look at modifying the bias. Okay, we're looking at a black screen. I'm just turning on the computer. I've got a postcard 
inserted in the PC speaker and yes everything's working I'm gonna press the pause screen so we can see what's going on so this bias has already been modified with the um, microcode so we can see here Xeon E5450 running at 3 gigahertz so that's perfect now uh, I will boot the machine but before that we're gonna have a look at uh, prices and also where you can get a pre-modified BIOS for a very good price. So here we are on AliExpress. Let's have a look. E5450 should come up straight away. We're going to sort by price and it looks like, uh, let's have a look at CPUs. So we're getting prices in Australian dollars. Let me just change that to US. That might make it a bit easier. So, yep. $18, $19 right about there. You can already see in that photo that it's pre-modified. So patching the bars, we're going to have a look at that shortly. But what if you don't want to inject the microcode yourself? You just want to get a, a bias that's ready to go. Um, bias mod Xeon. Let's have a look. We should find that seller. Yeah, this guy here. Um, he offers for $1. He basically gives you a patched bias. And the way you do this explains it in the description that you should um, contact them so there's an option uh, here contact uh, contact seller and you say to the seller look I've got this gigabyte or this Asus motherboard model number revision yada 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 um, can you do a bias for that and he will reply yep I can do that and then you uh, basically buy the product for a dollar and he'll email you the bios which you can then um, flash so I just put it into Windows. Let's have a look at the processor specs. It should show up uh, properly in the CPU ID software. So here we go. Intel Xeon E5450, 3 gigahertz clock speed, um, 4 cores. And look at that, it's got all the proper instructions. So yeah, that worked wonderful. Um, in a future video, we will come back to the Xeons. I'm planning on doing a video like um, three recommended Xeon processors. No, not necessarily the top ones. There are some low voltage ones which are quite interesting. But now let's have a look at modding the BIOS. Okay, let's do this. So the first thing we need is the BIOS. So this is the motherboard I'm using. It's a gigabyte board. Now, usually I recommend loading the uh, latest BIOS. However, the F8 BIOS for some reason causes issues with my motherboard. It will, after a while, um, recover from the second bias. It's got a dual bias. So I went with the F7 bias, but that shouldn't be an issue in your case. So we download the bias and I'm gonna save this. I created a folder uh, Xeon. We're gonna save it into that directory. Then we're gonna go to that directory, run that exe executable, which should unpack itself. So we only need this file, we can delete the other three files. So there you go, we've got the BIOS file. So I'm just uh, window snap. Then you gotta go to this website here, uh, deleted.com. I will put a link down below in the description. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And there's a link here. LGA 771 Zion Microcode Guides. How to update your microcode in an award or Phoenix BIOS. I've got an a word bias, so I'm gonna go with this option. Scroll down a little bit. We need to download this file. So I'm gonna save it into the same directory. So that's the zip file. Let's have a look. I'm just gonna copy paste that into here and delete the zip file. Okay, we're almost there. And now we're going to go with method one. We recommend it replace all of your existing microcode with the latest microcode from Intel. So we're going to go with this one because this microcode will support both, uh, both LGA775 chips. So you can use Core 2 and Core 2 Quad as well as Xeons. So we click on that and we download that into the same directory. Okay. Now we have to rename the microcode to ncpu code dot bin and make it read only so we need a command prompt for that actually we can rename it from here so let me just copy that name rename 
that's all done. And can't we make read only? Oh, we should be able to do it through here. Read only. There you go. That's all done. Delete your micro. Now we gotta run this command from a command line. So we type cmd for command prompt. Go to the root directory, cdc on, and let's have a look. And now we're gonna enter that command. Let me see if we can just copy paste this. That should be possible. Okay. And we're just gonna change out this here. So our bias is called P forty three T E S three G dot F seven and Press enter, off it goes, shouldn't take too long, and it's done. And that's it. So this is now our new BIOS file, and you just have to flash that onto your motherboard, and you're good to go. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I've already started overclocking, we're running at 3.3 GHz, just by raising the FSB and we're running Cinebench. How will it perform? Well, that's for the, maybe not the next video, but for a future video where we're going to have a look at some Xeon processors that I recommend. And that's pretty much it. Any questions, let me know. I'll put all the links that I believe are relevant down below in the description. But if you have any other questions, comments or feedback, let me know. And as always, if you found this video interesting and you want to see more stuff like it, be sure to subscribe. Check out um, other videos on the channel. Um, leave a comment, like the usual YouTube stuff. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.